Greetings, this is Prosa on Dixon Friday, Friday Live, which addresses different steps in implant prostodontic treatment and side effects. As we all know, implant prosthesis in upper posterior for sinus lift patients show highest failure rate. Under this topic, Professor Ho jung -bo of Prostodontics Division of Busan Dental University Hospital will be providing a lecture. Greetings. Thank you for coming all the way from Busan despite your busy schedule, treating, and researching. I'd like to express my gratitude. Before you begin, can you briefly explain your lecture? Professor Cho you know, I really look up to you. Today, I'm going to talk about how we can provide prosthodontic treatment in upper posterior implant cases, reduce failure rate, which is known to be very high, and prevent possible complications. Listening to your explanation, I really look forward to today's lecture. I really feel intrigued. For those of you watching the program from Dental Site, you can participate in real time via the chat screen. Leave your questions and solve your questions and win your chance at getting Starbucks coffee coupons. Those who leave outstanding questions will be selected as the best question raisers and will be sent Vusin and Music Tiger dental set. Do your study on prosthodontics and win a Vusin and Music Tiger dental set, which is very cute. Only those who agree to marketing on dental site will be able to receive the gifts. Now, I look forward to your interest and participation. Let us begin Professor Ho jung -bo's lecture. Greetings, I will begin my lecture. As Professor Joyce mentioned, it is known that there is a high failure rate in posterior upper implant treatment. In comparison, there's a higher failure rate. I'm a prosthodontist, I don't do surgery, so I'm not going to talk much about surgery. I'm going to talk about how prosthodontic treatment is provided to sinus lift patients, what should be considered, and what kind of treatment modalities we can choose. I'm going to focus on these topics. Before I begin, I'm going to share a study. The study result is not that significant. The study method is not important too. I was inspired with this study, short implant was placed after sinus lift and prosthodontists provided prosthesis and survival rate were observed. This is not a famous study, it's an open journal. Sinus lift was done along with placing very short implants. Prosthesis was delivered in a very favorable manner. I want to talk about two factors here. In upper posterior, should we place the same number of implants as the number of teeth missing? In this study, there is a very high success rate even though very short implants were used. If you look at the clinical images closely, I'm a prosthodontist and from my perspective, the emergence profile is very good. It is very similar to natural dentition. When I look at this study, when you make prosthesis that is so similar like natural dentition, even if surgery did not go well, the result may turn out for the better. This may be basic, but this study really attested to it. This is not really limited to upper posterior, but this study is quite old. When we place a single implant, success rate is 89.4%. The success rate is quite similar to when two implants are used for a bridge and three missing teeth case and two natural teeth are used as a bridge. Do we really need to place the same number of implants as the missing teeth? 
The more important factor is if you can do splinting or can disperse force, you need to place implants so that ideal prosthesis form can be achieved. In the case of posterior, from the center of implant position, there needs to be 11 millimeter of mesiodistal distance. This should be achieved to get a good posterior form. The image is about lower, but it's the same for both upper and lower. If you use internal types of merged implant, like awesome TS, from implant to top to the tip of gingiva, there needs to be 3 millimeter of thickness to get a good emergence profile. Implant placement is very important from the position. I'm not really sure about surgery, but this is quite a basic. The buccal bone thickness needs to be at least 1 millimeter or above, and there needs to be sufficient lingual bone as well. If you look at the clinical images on left and right, actually on the right, in the case of left, although implants were placed, stuck abutment was used, appropriate emergence profile was not achieved, and from the implant body to abutment, it is slanted. On the right, implant was placed, but appropriate emergence profile was provided. If you can get this ideal form, you can get a very natural looking look. You don't know which is natural tooth. Which do you think has better implant prognosis? In the case of left, there can be many complications like inflammation or food impaction. In the case of right, it is easy to clean and there is good soft tissue barrier formation. And as shown on the right, the abutment cuff is concave and sufficiently thick soft tissue barrier can be gained. S curve can be formed and connective tissue can be pressed to get a very strong barrier. If the implant is not placed in the correct position, even if you make custom abutment and try to do a good job as shown, embrasure space is closed off. In this case, cleansing becomes a very difficult. May I ask a question and cut you off? If you look on the slide, is it the right side? Number 25 and number 26. There's no space in between. It does not have good emergence profile and it's so tight, so much so you cannot put in proxy brush. In order to make that more healthy, you need to make it more elongated. In my opinion, that is the way to go. But in that case, metal of the abutment may be exposed. The patient may complain because the patient can see metal. What should I do? I'm not really sure you'll be able to see it because it's posterior area. There's an important point in your question. What I want to say is that it's related to the placement depths. As mentioned in the previous slide, there needs to be 3 millimeter of a space to form ideal emergence profile. If it is placed too shallow, then it can be problematic because you would have to expose metal to get appropriate cuff area. If it is aesthetically problematic, you can use link and zirconia abutment, but that strength can weaken. You need to factor this in when you place the implant. What I want to mention here is that in the case of upper posterior area, you do not need to be obsessed about placing wide implant. You do not need to place the same number of implants as the number of teeth missing. If you do that, implants can be placed too tight. 
Even if you expose metal, it will not solve the problem. Implant placement depths and inter-implant space. These two factors are very important. If you place implants too close, so you need to forego one implant and secure more space. In the case of two implants, then there will be no choice, but you need to place in more deeply and you would need to adjust it rather than placing just wide implants to get good soft tissue barrier. Taking this chance, I'm going to look whether there are any questions raised today. Pretty sky, I'm going to be studying really hard. I love you. Great lecture. Thank you. ID OMS LWY. This is a topic that I'm really interested in. This is live program. ID Kung. When I do sinus lift, I wait four months for crystal approach and five months for lateral approach before I do loading. That is the way I do it. The question is, when should I do loading? There are a lot of questions on when to do loading. This can vary significantly, so it's very difficult to pinpoint an answer. To put it brief, the highest failure rate is observed in immediate loading or early loading and there's very few studies on this. I believe doing early loading can be dangerous even if cortical bone is sufficient and the implant placement area and primary stability is good, immediate loading should be avoided if possible. The person who asked the question mentioned four months four months for a crystal approach and five months for lateral approach, but I'm not sure. Depending on the amount of residual bone, the surgeon needs to make the decision, and I believe you need to wait for at least four months for osteointegration to progress. If you take a more conservative approach after sinus lift, you would wait eight to nine months, so that would be more conservative. These days, the quality of implant has improved significantly and the surface has changed. The waiting period has been reduced, but in my opinion, if you have done bone graft in the site where bone graft is done, this is not a normal bone. For bone formation to occur, it takes time. With time, there is strength and hardness. I believe you need to wait at least six months. In the case of sinus lift, if you do lateral approach, periodontists and maxillary oral surgeons at my hospital also recommend providing prosthesis after six months. And if I look at studies, they always say you need to wait over four months. Thank you for your answer. So we're going to proceed with your lecture and receive further questions. How much embrasure space is necessary? There's no reference. How much embrasure space is necessary for implant? We need to look for answer in natural dentition. Professor Oh Sang Sun has published this paper analyzing natural teeth. I looked at this and realized that in the end, implanted prosthesis need to imitate the prosthesis of natural teeth. In terms of embrasure space in the posterior, I think 2 mm should be appropriate. 2 mm at C junction. Custom abutment is placed and in the margin which becomes the prosthesis, there needs to be at least 1.5 to 2 mm of space. I'm going to share a case. I'm at a university hospital, so I see a lot of extensive cases and it's very difficult to get such ideal position. A certain company introduced guided surgery 11 years ago and it was my first demo. It was very impressive for me and I did a digital diagnosis and prepared guided surgery. Immediate implant placement was done after extraction. Sinus lift was done at the same time. Crystal approach was used. You need to look at the vertical space. The space where the prosthesis can go in, upper and lower, that is very important. 
If you have placed the implant in ideal position while maintaining space, it may not be perfect. This surgery was done by myself, although a prosthodontist did this surgery. Implant was placed in ideal position and vertical position was appropriate and ideal emergence profile was achieved. The patient has no major complication even though it has been 12 years. I check every six months. Uh, this is immediate implant placement using guided surgery after extraction. Immediate implant placement was done. Ideal temporization was provided. This was how the patient returned home because the patient needs to engage in social activity. Double scan was done to fabricate final prosthesis. As you can see, I tried to make emergence profile similar to that of natural dentition. If you have a patient going through implanted treatment, there is a certain level of vertical and horizontal bone defect. So it is very difficult to, to place implant in ideal position, do occlusal adjustment, do T-scan. It is very difficult to find a patient where we can do accurate to balanced occlusion. Perhaps you see more in private clinics. I think a lot of dentists learn about sinus lift because uh, people do sinus lift really well. I'm not really good at it. I was surprised that the bone was so thin and implants were placed like this. This is not a case done by me. And the implant must be cheaper and University Hospital is very expensive. Perhaps it's because it's cheap. You see people having placed so many implants. Sometimes they place the implant wrongly and just don't use it. If you look at this patient, implant has been placed and sinus lift was done. However, in the upper left, implant failed after sinus lift. There's a severe horizontal and vertical bone defect, if you provide a fixed prosthesis, not only is cleansing difficult, the emergence profile will not be favorable. I get a lot of referral patients because I'm at a university hospital. I see a lot of failure. In the case of this patient, the sinus lift was done in upper right and upper left. The problem is we didn't know the reason. What is interesting is the failure did not occur where sinus lift was done. Also, integration was done nicely after bone graft. If you look at these patients, the margin area is melting. It's either because the vertical space is too excessive or impression was not taken properly. A lot of people use cement type and excess cement goes in causing inflammation and bone resorption. I see a lot of unfortunate cases. If you don't know the cause, if you look at the x-ray, the margin looks okay. However, in reality, it really isn't okay. As shown on the bottom right, there is a lot of cement. And when you see that, you realize that it was destined to fail. I think upper posterior area is where we need to pay more attention. This is not limited to upper posterior. I believe we need to aim for a prosthesis with good margin and emergence profile. I use digital technology actively. When I use stock abutment, I scan stock abutment to save the file and place the implant. And in the case of subgingival area, you don't need to use gingival cord. You can just take impression on the top part and do merging. Scan was taken and you can see the subgingival margin is clear here. This is because I already scanned the abutment. So even if I scan what is visible, superimposition is possible. Especially in the posterior area, this is important. If the margin is subgingival, I've jumped to anterior area because I wanted to show you this. If you have intraoral scanner or model scanner, when you're using custom abutment, you can take scan ahead or ask the lab to take scan ahead. In the case of anterior, you do subgingival margin. In this case, it is very difficult to put the cord in. You just take impression of what is visible and you use the STL file which has been scanned. If, if you do 
If you do superimposition, as shown in the far lower right, the margin is very clear. All people who do digital dentistry do this way, and you can get accurate margin in this way. I believe this is very useful when you have a subgingival margin in the posterior area or where conditions are unfavorable. Scan your custom abutment and scan what is visible and do superimposition. At Prostodontic Division in Busan University Dental Hospital, we do this. You can see the subgingival margin here, and you can design right over here. And design can be produced. In the case of posterior area, ideally you would not have subgingival margin, but even if you do, you can use this technique. Due to time constraint, I've talked about my experience and the theory. It was quite short. What is important is the depth and the distance between implants. I hope you pay attention to these factors. I'm going to share you this case. This was a case where the patient was referred from very far. Sinus lift was done and implant was placed. But it was placed like this. The dentist probably had no choice. I do relate it because most dentists do excellent sinus lift, but they are not confident about block bone augmentation because the patient came in and implant placement was done. However, prosthesis could not be delivered and the relation with the patient deteriorated and the patient was referred to dental university. How do you provide treatment? There could be no emergence profile and cleaning is impossible. If you have to place implant in this way, or if you have placed multiple implants, but if multiple implants have failed, what kind of prosthesis can we provide in the upper? I provided a similar lecture in this topic previously. You need to utilize a vertical space. Awesome has magic force system. Following this guideline, how much of gingival space is covered is defined. This paper is very famous paper, and if vertical space is over 15 millimeter, so combining upper and lower, it will be over 30. Would it be reasonable to just consider fixed prosthesis if it is 12 millimeter? In other words, combined if it is below 25 millimeter, what kind of compromise can we reach? We can probably make a gingival area and also enjoy the benefit of fixed prosthesis. In the case of below 10 millimeter, you need to use fixed prosthesis. As shown on the right, if the vertical space is too big, the length of prosthesis becomes longer and there can be mechanical and biological complication. Even if you put aside emergence profile, as shown, this is a case done by a dentist. If you look at the image, if you place implant only considering bone, and if you and if you're just fixated on doing sinus lift, the result is unfavorable prosthesis. There's no emergence profile. I don't know if you can see the yellow crown. In this case, you need to make the gingival area in order to compensate the implanted placement position. In this case, the gingival area was not covered sufficiently and there was a lot of food impaction and the patient's face looked sunken, especially in the lip area. This is not just about emergence profile. This has become an incredibly difficult case. A lot of people do all on X these days. You need to consider whether cleaning is possible or whether the soft tissue barrier can be formed. As for this patient from the lower, the distance to the upper was beyond 15.5 millimeter and 18 millimeter. In this case, you need to be careful. Austin has magic for. When you do this, you need to consider the aesthetic factor and cover the gingiva like this. You can make prosthesis like this. However, this is a fixed type. Therefore, it is impossible to clean. 
You make emergence profile and the shape of gum, but it is impossible to clean. You need to consider this so when you make a prosthesis. As you can see, it has been made nicely and implant has been placed in nice position, but cleaning is impossible. There are these kind of problems. These are something that we need to work on. Today's topic is sinus lift, and I want to focus on that. When you place implant in upper posterior, there can be issues in the form of prosthesis. This is an image from my textbook. If you look over here, the role of denture base. You may be surprised because I'm talking about denture base all of a sudden. But the role of denture base, as shown in the far left, if it is full denture in the lower, denture base becomes very important because it needs to support, maintain, and stabilize. You need to make it significantly wider. If you use two implants as shown in the middle, retention becomes key. The denture does not need to stick. The size of denture base becomes smaller compared to full denture. As shown on the right, if you place multiple implant, it becomes similar to fixed prosthesis. Therefore, the role of denture base becomes minimal. You need to make denture base as thin and small as possible, and you need to make it more aesthetic. As shown on the left, in the case of partial RPD, you need to make wider denture base, but if you are going to place an implant and use locator or healing abutment, there is a retention factor there. The size of denture base becomes a smaller. Denture base does not need to be wide. Why am I talking about a removable prosthesis? You need to think of this concept when doing implant prosthesis. I've talked about similar topic in prosthodontics on Friday previously. The function of denture base area if you provide a fixed prosthesis after placing implant, if you need to provide a denture base, the purpose would be to focus on aesthetics and to position tooth in neutral zone and to form appropriate shape of prosthesis. As you can see, if implant has been placed in correct position, especially in the upper and lower posterior area, if implant has been placed with significant vertical space, the crown becomes significantly elongated. If it becomes elongated, as Professor Chu has mentioned, there are many issues including aesthetics. For cleansing, you need to make holes there. If you do this, then the cheeks would look shrunken for aesthetics as shown in the lower. If you provide the gingiva, then it will be impossible to clean. This is a standstill situation. In this case, how shall we solve? Let me show you this case. Fixed prosthesis would be ideal. However, if the space is too big, if the implant is placed wrongly, what shall we do? I'm going to share another case. As shown, bilateral sinus lift was done and implant was placed like this. The vertical space is almost 17 millimeter and implant is labioversioned. Because alveolar bone itself, there's a lot of a vertical and horizontal resorption. If you do a fixed prosthesis like this, the patient would not be able to clean it. The patient complained of odor. Whenever the patient had food in the 20, in the cervical area, there was food impaction and the cheeks looked sunken. Four implants were placed and it was naturally to think of a fixed prosthesis. I changed the design in order to improve mechanical complications and problems. If you look at the digital analysis, in the case of upper posterior, the vertical space 16 to 17 millimeter, it is too dangerous to do a fixed prosthesis. I make bar in the first two teeth, it was approximately 12 millimeters, so I make a fixed prosthesis and I create a bar that is connected to fixed prosthesis like this. If you look at the diagram, there are implants here, two implants, fixed prosthesis were provided, coping was made and bar was connected on that, porcelain veneer is made and because implant is placed buccally, we need to make an ideal position with prosthesis, attachment is connected, 
and zirconia prosthesis was formed. Zirconia is basically the same as fixed prosthesis, but if the patient has difficulty in cleaning, the patient can take it off and clean. You don't need to wear it as you sleep because it's made of zirconia. The function is the same. If you make it in the form like this, you can get ideal prosthesis form and aesthetic issues can be improved and cleansing problems can be resolved. In partial prosthesis, at least advantage can be taken. If you look over here, if there's too much of vertical space or if there's a lot of horizontal bone absorption, if you just look at bone and do sinus lift and do implant placement, the prosthesis form can be weird. You need to include the denture base or the gingiva and the prosthesis so that the artificial tooth can be positioned in ideal position. If you look at my textbook, this is Implant Assisted RPD. These kind of prosthesis, Implant Assisted RPD. The connection can be solitary type attachment, bar type attachment, healing abutment. You can just provide support. A lot of dentists to use a surveyed crown. If you make surveyed crown or if you provide solitary type, it, there's movement. Bar type does not have movement, so you can get the similar function as fixed prosthesis. When we make IARPD or implant assisted RPD, we also say implant partial. When you do sinus lift, the bone quality is going to be weak. If you look at the category solitary type and ball type is divided. In the case of sinus lift, which do you recommend between solitary type and bar type? I've learned a lot through your lecture. You already explained this. To put it simply, in the case of upper, the bone quality is bad and sinus lift was done. If you attach solitary type attachment, you need to get supported retention and stability. So it's very difficult. There's a lot of lateral force. I believe you need to place two or more implants and do splinting or make bar. I recommend doing splinting even you provide fixed prosthesis. I agree. It is better to share the load. Professor Ha, you are really popular today and there are so many questions. Really? Following the question before, in the case of sinus lift and implant placement, how long thereafter do you do loading? The question is pretty basic. If there is a primary stability, how fast can I do loading? The questions are all about loading. ID rule when you do progressive loading, what is the indication and protocol? I hope we had time to answer all the questions, but due to time constraint, we will address the overall opinion of Professor Ho on loading and progressive loading. Simply put, I'm at University Hospital. Don't get me wrong. Some dentists can be really early adopters and can provide treatment, but in the case of the University Hospital, we are more conservative and we tend to stick to principle. As you know, in the case of upper, when you do early loading, even if you do splinting, the success rate is 80% and there's a very little study. There's very weak evidence base. If you do sinus lift and place implant in the upper, even if there's primary stability, I provide removable prosthesis rather than immediate loading. When you do full mouth, full arch cross splinting, this can be considered, especially when the antagonist is weak. If the antagonist is full denture, it's better. I think the question stemmed from the case before. I did full arch and did cross splinting. Crystal sinus approach was done and residual bone was over 6 mm and I thought it was okay. I de-roll the question. Uh, here's your answer. If you do partial, you need to be careful in terms of upper. There's a lot of study on the posterior. In the case of lower partial prosthesis, immediate loading is possible. And if there's two implants, there's studies and there's studies on one implant as well.
I always measure ISQ. If it is over 80, I always attempt immediate loading. In the case of lower, I never do that in the upper. I hope this answered your question. The three questions raised on loading by OMS LWY, Role, and Happy Dentist. Dr. Professor Ho has answered them all. Smile again. Professor Joe, Professor Ho, I look forward to today's prosthodontics on Friday. ID OMS LWY. Second, in the thin upper, if number four, five, six, seven are missing, do I need to place the four implants? If sufficient sinus lift is done to place 10 millimeter implant, I do placement on number four, six, and seven, or four, five, and seven. Can I do distal cantilever after placing in number four, five, and six? It's a very detailed and difficult question. Maybe that my answer may be against the reference, so I'm quite concerned. I don't do implant, honestly speaking. My patients are referred after implants have been placed. If number four, five, six, and seven are missing, I prefer number four, six, and seven to get appropriate prosthesis form. I think it can withstand it. But as for distal cantilever, you need to be careful because in the case of mesial cantilever, if you do number four, five, and seven and connect the number four, it's okay. Because of the leverage effect, the occlusal force becomes harder the posterior you go. Placing number four, five, and six and distal cantilever, we need to think about elderly patients. If there's very little bone in number seven, Rather than placing it in their area, I just place number four, five, six, but you need to extract the antagonist. Regardless of bilateral partial or so you need to make sure that occlusal force is not excessively applied to number seven and the lower. And when there's not that many natural dentition. I do it, but it is solely for patient convenience, but epidemiologically, it's not perfect. If you do distal cantilever, you need to educate the patient very well. No matter how nice of a prosthesis you provide, if the patient uses it roughly, it may not last that long. You need to tell the patient that it's an unfavorable condition and that they need to be more cautious. You need to drill that into your patients. That's right. Professor, this is a question, so now please carry on. Because there are a lot of questions, I feel nervous. Among the prosthodontics live, I am getting most number of questions now. You're very popular. I'm going to talk about removable cases after doing sinus lift. I hope you don't get me wrong. For young patients, for those who can get implants, it is better to provide a fixed prosthesis. This patient has received the implant 10 years ago and few of them failed. The patient is 80 years old and has systemic disease and further implants cannot be placed. How will you treat this case? Because these kind of cases are very frequent. The patient received sinus lift on both sides and placed the implants. In number 22, there was implant, but it failed. At first, there was fixed prosthesis, but it failed, and bone augmentation was not possible because of systemic disease. The patient did not want further surgery. Number 5 was submerged. I uncovered it. The patient has five implants, although it's removable. You can provide a prosthesis that functions as fixed prosthesis. I'm going to skip. You may not really see these cases, even if it's denture. Removable denture without movement is best. Once there's movement, the patient suffers gum pain and the relationship with the patient deteriorates. You can make denture without movement if there are five implants. If you have made the situation with sinus lift, if you're confounded as to what you should do in the future, please take a look at this image. 
the important factor is that by saying no movement, all force is applied to denture, and a strong force is applied to the denture. And a lot of people complain of denture chipping and hard time having to do maintenance. And I want to emphasize this. Starting from the design, you need to factor that in. In the case of rigid RPD, up to a kuzel, you need to make it the metal. You also do major connector. You don't need to do it on the palatal side. Because there's no movement, this is very important. The inner surface should all be metal. You may think it may be too cumbersome, but this is done by the lab technicians. You need to consider this and make prosthesis. Even if you have placed an implant after sinus lift, you can provide appropriate prosthesis and you can have it function. Patient satisfaction can increase. If you do removable prosthesis, if something fails, you can just fix it and the patient will be able to maintain it more easily. This patient is from Gyeonggi-do. This was how the patient received the implant. Only four implants were placed in the upper. Sinus lift was done. But in the lower, everything failed. How do you do prosthesis? I don't have initial visit photo, but the fixed prosthesis in one piece, so I was really surprised. When I removed it, I was not able to take an image, but there were a whole bunch of food and there was severe order, so I was surprised. I cleaned it thoroughly. Using this bar was made. You can make a denture without movement because implant four of them have been placed, and lower is full denture. You can make ideal prosthesis in this case because there's no movement in the upper, it's pain free and very comfortable. Bar design because uh, this is a uh, denture without movement, the denture base is small, and cleaning is possible and the full denture can be made in lower. You can make teeth in neutral zone. You can do positioning in neutral zone. Because vertical space was quite extensive, you cannot provide a fixed prosthesis. Because you do sinus lift very well, implants are placed like this, but I hope you consider prosthodontic complications and design your cases top-down way. Bar is made. As shown, it is covered with metal. It needs to be very strong. A kuzel surface, campus line. You need to take impression of the occlusal surface. You need to have balanced bilateral occlusion. This is full denture and the ridge is in bad condition. But the upper is so strong, so in that case, it can be very painful in the lower, as if rubbed with sandpaper. The patient has a full denture. Now the patient is receiving four implants placed in the lower. If the patient had fixed a prosthesis, would the patient have been able to overcome that shrunken look on the lip? We need to consider various factors. Uh, this is a recent case. Uh, this was how the implants were placed. The patient had a severe distrust against the dentist. When I took photos, uh, I was scolded. The patient bad mouthed the dentist, saying the dentists only take images. If you look at the model, number six and seven are placed completely wrongly, and the sinus lift was done, but the prosthesis could not be provided. I was not able to see the temporary prosthesis the patient used. The patient completed of order and inability to clean. What shall we do? We need to make a gingiva. You need to have the patient to be able to clean. You make it in bar form. You think of it as a removable prosthesis, but it's a fixed prosthesis. You need to make it cleansable. If you take it out, the toothbrush can go in, as well as floss. The patient is very happy. If you remove it, you would have to retract the cheeks to be able to do it, but it's pretty much impossible to clean. If it is the case, the tooth cannot be positioned in the neutral zone. This is the adjusted type. This is temporary. 
I forgot to put the final prosthesis image in. You can provide prosthesis like this. I'm going to share you my final case. I had a lot of cases. I reduced them because of time constraint. The patient had really a lot of implants placed. The sinus lift was done. These cases are quite frequent. If you look at upper right, five implants are placed. So it's even more than natural dentition. I was so surprised. The patient received implants 10 years ago. In the case of interior area, block bone augmentation was done. The patient came in 2017 and in 2019, the resident looked at it and did bone graft. In the upper anterior area, bone augmentation was not done properly and two implants were placed in the posterior area. I think doing sinus lift is easy for surgeons. I don't really do surgery, so I'm not sure, but it must be easy for surgeons. So I'm not sure whether you can see this, but the bar was used in this case. Tenture was provided. It was made of gold and the prosthesis was inserted and removed using friction. The friction was all gone and it could not be repaired. I could not attach attachment and the patient complained of discomfort. It was too difficult to use and uncomfortable and the patient was not able to chew properly. The patient was referred to me, to my resident. This is the denture. Implants were placed in upper right. I tried to unscrew it. I wanted to use what I could and then remove the rest, but everything came out. If you look at the implant, based on implant to surface, there needs to be three millimeter of space in between implants. You need to make emergence profile and make it possible to clean. In that case, it will not have peeled. Perhaps the dentist could have gone without the second implant from the back. It, it was removed. I had no choice but to save one and refer the patient to Professor Kim Young dong to place the implant in the anterior side. I wanted the patient to receive removable prosthesis that was like fixed prosthesis. I thought of all on five concept. Two implants were placed. The maxillo-oral surgeon made the implant placement nicely. Now I'm going to use these five implants to provide prosthesis in the upper. The lower is removable prosthesis. I thought all on five was possible because the occlusal force was not as strong. We're in rural area. The patient rode three hours to come in. If you, to give you a tip, the patient's rest position, you get the PED using the tray, mixed putty and a regular body silicone. You have the patient to close the mouth to the vertical rest position that was measured previously. You do it slowly. For instance, if it was 65, you use stop at 65. The body has resistance, so it can stop. This is a VD for bar or temporization. The patient cannot write three hours to make an occlusal rim. This is about a prosthodontic, so I'm giving you a prosthodontic tip. You take impression of upper and lower and in bite tray, put in putty and get the VD in rest position. This is something that we have developed. Do you get the campus line, midline, and send the patient back? You can get excellent mounting. If you make a temporary using this mounting, you need to reduce 2 mm from rest position to fabricate provisional. Then I can do relining or occlusal adjustment. In this case, you can almost reduce two patient visits. I'm going to make a bar. After that, I use the VD to design the bar and make provisional. Bar is placed like this. You can do splinting on all five, but the path was not very good, so I segmented it. The provisional is made like this. I use bar attachment. This is called Magic Talk System from Austin, which is about to be released. I heard a lot of preparations are being made. 
This is fixed prosthesis, but if necessary, the patient can remove it. It's not like denture where you need to remove it every single day. You can use it for two, one or two days and clean it and then reuse it. This is a zirconia prosthesis. It's not denture. In full arch, there are many things to consider. You need to be cautious because the patient can experience dislodgement. We need to be careful in the case of partial edentulous cases. It can be very useful. The patient is very satisfied with this. It is fixed prosthesis, but it's pretty, and if necessary, the patient can take it out. I'm sharing a full arch case because we come across these kind of cases frequently. Occlusal adjustment is done on provisional. I have randomly set the VD, so occlusal adjustment is done using provisional. I have the patient use it for one or two months. If the TMJ condition is bad, I have the patient use it for three months. With this, the occlusion becomes stabilized. Intraoral scan is used to take internal scan of the bar, external and internal scan of the provisional. If you send the data out with adjusted occlusion, then the final prosthesis is automatically fabricated. It's very simple. It can be done within four or five visits. So this is zirconia prosthesis and it is used to cover the gingiva. It's not like a denture. It's a fixed denture without movement. It's a fixed zirconia removable denture. It is aesthetic and it is really easy to clean. The patient was told to remove it every two days. The patient told me the patient was taking it out once a week. There was no smell. When you place implant only where the implant is, if the position is really bad in the posterior area, this is a prosthodontic tip you can utilize in those cases. I'm going to skip specific details. These will be addressed in a different time. My conclusion, in the case of upper posterior, don't place implants too adjacent to each other. Don't place it too shallow. It needs to be at least three millimeters deep. The inter-implanted distance needs to be three millimeter. This needs to be achieved to get natural look. Just think of three and three. You don't need to place implants the same as the number of teeth missing. If you don't do block bone augmentation or vertical bone augmentation, or you may have done sinus lift or existing implants, so some of it may have fallen out. In this case, you can have a conversation with your patient, and if you can provide removable fixed zirconia prosthesis, this can be a very good prosthesis for good maintenance. This can be ideal for maintenance as well. Specifics will be addressed in the next lecture. Because of time constraint, I will end my lecture. Thank you for the wonderful lecture. There are so many questions, so we have to answer them studiously. Busan Wonderful Dental Clinic, I'm late. I'm here. Off work, Tiger. I'm watching Prosthodontics on Friday after work. I love you. I really like doing hydro lift these days. I apply 3cc, lift the membrane, do minimum bone graft, and when I check with Ostom CT after three months since surgery, it's difficult to, to find the cause, but ISQ numbers are very good, and I try loading. Will this be stable and sustainable? What is your answer? I'm a prosthodontist. I'm really interested in biomaterial and the surgical area as well. I study that. If you look at the lectures done by famous dentists or lecturers, I have not done a lot of sinus lift, but this means that crystal approach was done and that there's significant residual bone. In this case, even without bone graft, if implant is placed accurately, new bone can be formed. Not significant amount, but a certain level of new bone can be gained. ISQ uses vibration. It's not about whether the fixation is strong or not. The sound that comes off is the same.
It means that implant to bony surface is wider. You need to differentiate that. If you have good ISQ value, then a wider surface is engaged. It's not the strong attachment. We need to be aware. If ISQ value is good, we get primary stability not from the tip of the implant. We get it from the middle or cervical area. Epidemiologically, if you apply TURC, it is focused on the superior area or cervical area. If ISQ value is good, you can see that wider area is engaged. When you do perio test, I'm not sure what the name is. You need to do that as well. Even if you don't give a bone graft, you can get good figures and you can do loading, but there needs to be significant residual bone. Based on my recollection, I think there needs to be at least 5 or 6 millimeters. Good ISQ means that it engages a wider area and it is well fixed. After 3 months, I think it's okay to do loading. It's not going to be major problematic. Uh, the recommendation is to do progressive loading. If you provide a final prosthesis in this time, you can have the patient to chew on softer food for a couple of months to get that progressive loading effect. I really like your lecture. GI Dental, I have a question, but ID Hot has raised the question faster. Due to bone level difference between natural teeth and implant, embrasure has been formed in significance and the patient is complaining of food impaction. Is there any tip for design? I think you have already provided explanation. If the embrasure space is big, the papilla becomes flatter. It becomes a flatter and it looks bigger. If you place implant deeper, I think we would be able to solve the issue. Because we need to make the profile space smaller as we go up. But the question is actually about difference related to bone level. It looks like the pa the question is about elongation. As you have mentioned, in this case, perhaps you can use a partial prosthesis which does not move like a bridge. In that case, even if it is single, you can do partial prosthesis as I've shown you in my cases. ID Kwachon, GI Dental. If there is perforation during sinus lift, uh, what should you do? First and foremost, can you give us an advice as to prevent the perforation? I think this is a question for surgeon. When I was going through a perio program in Korea University, I did a lot of sinus lift and I did a lot of perforation as well. Once perforation occurs, you need to close it off. And those who are experts apply membrane and stuff. I'm sorry, but I'm a prosthodontist, so I don't have much to say. If you look at surgeons talking on this topic, depending on the size of perforation, you can close it off, or if it is smaller in size, you can use resorbable membrane. ID Vongju. If after sinus lift, when I fabricate prosthesis, uh, the crown lengthening can be observed frequently. This is unfavorable in terms of maintenance. What kind of prosthesis should I do? I think the question was raised before listening to my lecture. In the case of edentulous patient, do you have a know-how to compensate for implant placement angle? This is from Kwachon Jiai Dental as well. I'm not sure whether the person is talking about fully dentulous patient, but in order to do this, you need to use guide surgery. Guide surgery is the simplest. 
In the case of a prosthetic division, uh, our resident always uh, designed the guide and send it to the period division as well as surgery division. There is rarely any case where the path is wrong after that. Placing multiple implants in fully dentulous case without path going wrong. Unless you're really a guru, it's very difficult. I'm sure Professor Cho know this better, but most people use submerged type internal connection and it has more steeper 11 degrees. So 22 degrees on both sides. If it goes beyond that, it does not go in. As a prosthodontist, I used to like external type. I have no choice but to use internal type now, but if you use external type, over 40 degrees can be overcome. If the anterior area is extremely labiovergent, I use external type in those cases. For prosthesis, in the past, external type was mainstream when I was lecturing. That came to my mind. Busan, I love. I think it's your fan, Dr. Ho. In the case of sinus lift, there is a lot of interocclusal space. When you provide a fixed implant prosthesis, the length of prosthesis becomes elongated and interdental space becomes wider, leading to food impaction. In the case of molar, the patient experiences difficulty in maintaining hygiene. How can we approach this case? I think this question was raised before my lecture ended. After having listened to your lecture, I think the question would have been resolved. I don't do provide provisional in the case of single case. I tighten three times on the day of setting to prevent sinking as much as possible. Do you believe provisional is a must-have in single case restorations? What is the biggest difference in provisional and final prosthesis? ID When you use provisional, you experience a sinking at times in internal connections. In the case of sinking down, personally speaking, even when you look at Austin connection, sinking does not really occur frequently these days. Addressing sinking with provisional, rather than that, in the case of upper posterior, you can check whether posterior support can be secured. If there is any TMJ problem, the person asked about single, but with provisional, you can also see whether the emergence profile that I provided have caused a cheek or tongue biting or food impaction. I always use provisional for all patients in university hospitals and then get feedback. Provisionals are very useful. Unless the patient is in real rush, for instance, the need to go overseas, other than that, you provide provisional. With digital dentistry, if there's any discomfort while the patient uses provisional, because designs are made digitally, you can open the file and ask the lab technician to adjust it. I think provisionals are very useful in that effect. For all occlusion patients, provisionals are essential. Yoido Miso Dental Clinic. What is the advantage of Magic 4 compared to general denture? What is the price range? If you use Magic 4, what is the satisfaction and prognosis? The Magic 4 is introduced by Denka, a US company. I was in USC in the US. USC and Denka is working on it together, and I've seen many cases. Professor Kim tae yoon is leading the effort. A Korean professor, yes. I've seen a lot of cases. Magic 4 is not a denture. It's a fixed prosthesis. It looks like a denture. It's similar to the case I've shown you. It's a fixed prosthesis which tightens using a screw. It is not splinted with bar. T-bar is used, and splinting is done by the superior prosthesis. Therefore, prosthesis management is essential. The material is zirconia. It is not a full denture. It is a zirconia fixed prosthesis with maximum aesthetics. 
It's different to the case that I've mentioned. There's another question below. If, do you use ceramic or zirconia? Compared with existing denture, what is the Master K3 force like in the case of Magic 4? I've talked about how it uses zirconia. This is a fixed prosthesis. Magic 4 is not a denture, it's a fixed prosthesis. You cannot really define how stronger it is. It most probably is stronger. The thing you need to be cautious about. If there's no sufficient vertical space, because the screw goes in zirconia, in the case of Botmont, the screw is tightened on titanium, but in this case, the screw is tightened on zirconia. If significant lateral force or force is applied, it can chip. The design to compensate for this is necessary. Do you make it at COSA? You need to consult with a company. This is not removable. This is a fixed prosthesis. Thank you for the question. Happy Dental Clinic. There's a problem with cleaning in the case of Magic 4 and 6. How can I solve this? That's magic talk, which I've mentioned. It's fixed, but the patient can remove it. It's difficult to remove it, but it can be cleaned. There's a question from Park Jin Young on YouTube. When you place a short implant, it can be unfavorable in terms of lateral force and occlusal force in upper posterior after placing short implant. What kind of things do we need to be cautious in terms of prosthesis? I get a lot of these questions. There's no study that says short implants have lower success or survival rate. The problem is that superior prosthesis, if the margin goes down, perhaps if you place a 5 millimeter implant, if, if 2 millimeter of bone melts away, then the implant is placed 3 millimeters and it's a problem. The short implant, you need to make a soft tissue barrier so that the short implant can persist long term. You need to consider the prosthodontic and periodontic factors, yes. There's no study that says it's unfavorable. If you do a good job in forming emergence profile, making sure that the bone does not melt away in the cervical area is very important. OMSLWY, thank you for your answer. It's of great help. There are many opinions about loading, but I understand that we need to explain the principle to the patient. There are so many questions. K-A-Z-I-N-R. What do you think about fabricating partial denture in the form of conus crown? You need to be careful here. Some people like this type. I'm going to give you my personal opinion. I don't want you to do it. I hope you don't use the conus type. ID Postal, after implant crown setting, as prosthesis is provided in previously edentulous area, patients sometimes complain of cheek biting. Is there a clinical tip? In the case of cheek and tongue biting, people only think about overjet and overbite, especially in the posterior area. But if you look back at what we've learned when we were students, when we align artificial teeth, we would align anterior area first. As for upper, you would align the anterior area first and then align the lower. And you would form a pound line focusing on retromolar pad. With the canine, if lingual cusp of prosthesis is positioned there, I believe it is within the neutral zone. If you do not factor this in and align the lower wrongly, no matter what, how you adjust the upper, the cheek or tongue can be bitten. I've treated this exact type of patient. The patient was referred to me from a private dental clinic. I'm going to talk about the clinical tip. You need to use a fit checker. If the patient bites on the cheek or bites on tongue, whichever direction, you apply fit checker there and you have the patient chew on it for about one minute. You check whether there is a hole in the fit checker. 
That area is where it is beyond the neutral zone. Alignment has been done wrongly. Prosthesis is not in the appropriate position. You should prep or you need to shift the overall prosthesis. Due to time constraint, we're going to entertain two more questions. In the case of upper posterior area with a severe bony resorption after implant placement, if you place fixed prosthesis, patients complain of food impaction on the buccal side. In which way should I form the crown? If vertical space is sufficient, it should imitate natural teeth. <laughs> Professor Haas fan club, is this real? Thank you for the wonderful lecture. It's really interesting cases. Ocean love is going to be the last question we're going to entertain. ID 늘 푸른 치과 의원 and 풍왕. Your questions will be addressed later via YouTube or personally. There are so many questions here. Professor Hall, you're really popular. Perhaps you didn't have after party today. Maybe they canceled after party to listen in this lecture. The final question that will be answered today will be from ID Ocean Love. As for questions raised later, these will be individually answered. Ocean Love, thank you for the wonderful lecture. After implant the placement, when you fabricate over denture using a bar, due to sinus in the upper and the mandibular canal in the lower, it's difficult to do implant placement in the posterior area. If I just place implant up to a premolar and do bar in cantilever form up to the posterior area, how long do you extend? I cannot recall the name of the author, but if you look at the study, if it's all on four hybrid prosthesis, you would place four implants in the anterior and you would extend it up to number six. So the ratio should be one by one. If we assume that the distance between tooth and the most distally placed implant is 1, the study says it can be extended by 1 by 1.5. However, this is too dangerous. You need to consider the antagonist. If the antagonist has similar form, I believe the ratio could be up to 1 by 1. But this is only when cross arch splinting was done. You can do cross arch splinting with bar as well. The ratio can be up to 1 to 1.5. If you do not do cross arch splinting, I believe 1 by 0 0.5 is dangerous. You need to go below that. There is no specific reference. Finite element analysis is like that. You cannot really believe it. But generally speaking, excessive cantilever effect can be risky. Thank you. ID Nirpurunchikwa. And question raised via YouTube, Pungwang. T-Y-H-H-Y-T-8-4, Great Joy, Mikkel, K-S-W-1-1-1-8, A-A-A, Professor Hall, Fan Club, I think the rest are words of encouragement. Answers will be provided individually. At times, the people raise questions on YouTube, but if you raise questions on YouTube, you cannot get gifts. Please view from then all site and raise your questions on real-time chat screen. That'll be best. In this way, you'll be able to get the present. Today we've had a lot of questions. It was a wonderful lecture. Thank you. I believe we need to invite you once again because there are so many questions. I would like to express my gratitude to those who have raised questions. Professor Ho, can you pick two out of all the questions which left a great impression? Please select two. I would like to give it to you, Professor. You have raised such a wonderful question. I'm going to give it to 
Professor Ho's fan club. And I believe there's also a dentist who raised multiple questions. OMSLWY? I think the person who raised the most number is OMSLWY. This person raised questions a lot. Can you give it to three people? I'm going to choose OMSLWY and Nilpuran Dental Clinic. Thank you for all the questions. The PD. I will pay for one gift set. Three people will receive the gift. OMSLWY, Nilpuran Dental Clinic, and uh, Professor Haas Fan Club. Three people have been selected for gifts. Congratulations. The real-time chat event in Prosthodontics on Friday continues on, so I look forward to your interest. Could you give a word of advice to those who are studying up until late, including Professor Ho's fan club? In brief, So, thank you everyone. I'm not really bright on the surgical part, so if there's something wrong, I apologize for that. I've answered to the level which I'm aware of. You should not do surgery just looking at bone. I believe you should try top-down method. You need to think of the final prosthesis first. So thank you. Thank you for coming here despite your busy schedule. Those of you who studying prosthodontics on Friday, did you enjoy prosthodontics on Friday with Professor Ho Jungbo? We were able to get various solutions on implanted prosthesis for patients who have gone through sinus lift. I hope this lecture helped you in reducing the failure rate. The questions that were not addressed will be answered via reply. In June, Dr. Hosobok of Lucent Dental Clinic is going to talk about the present address and future of digital dentistry. Thank you for staying up with us up until late. Thank you. Great work.